Hello everyone and welcome to episode 3 of Alan Wake. We're starting here at the main title screen because when last we left we were on the run from some police officers and I believe that pursuit is in progress. So we're going to hit continue now. Uh, if you joined a bit early, sorry for the um, sort of false start there. I, I accidentally tried to stream to both Twitch and Steam, and the broadcast just freaked right out. Hopefully it looks okay now. It seems okay on our end, but do let us know if there's any odd technical issues. Uh, we have a specific goal for tonight, which is we want to finish episode three of the game. Um, our goal for the last episode had been you know, get through episode two, but then we wound up going a little bit longer because we wanted to make sure that we could stay live up until... Okay, so I'm getting confirmation from a friend of the stream, Arrow465, that it is looking okay, so that's good. Yeah, we wanted to go a bit longer so that we could toss over to more than a Mia, so we went just a little bit here into episode three, and I figured this would be a great opportunity to catch up. Uh, based on feedback, we also turned the volume of the game up a little bit uh, from last time. Hopefully it is easier to hear the voices, but let us know and we this can... This was everywhere I went, circling me. The cops didn't stand a chance. They were after a writer, not a monster. We can adjust it further. We were uh, making some fun of Alan Wake's uh, running endurance in an earlier episode, but I will give him a pass on the mountain roads. You know, we're running over uneven terrain. Oh, crap. You on the ground. Hold it right there. There's nowhere to run. Yeah, I don't think this rock is fooling him. Nope. <laughs> Okay, Arrow is saying that the, the dialogue is good so far, so we will keep it as it is. The, the birds didn't take down the helicopter, did they? I was not paying... Oh my god, I think they did. <laughs> oh boy, was I looking in the wrong direction. Okay, I want to go through there, but not before we check out this Firewatch Tower. That, that was the helicopter, right? Okay, while the cops take attendance, I think we're gonna <laughs> be on our way. I imagine that the broadcast tower in the distance was part of the local radio station. Maine seemed like a decent guy. Perhaps he could give me directions to the coal mine. Natural shadows clung to the gate. The darkness that was after me was trying to stop me. I wouldn't get through without a light. I kind of feel like the gate itself could have stopped me. I'm not sure we needed more shadows on it. Oh, well, hey, Tashir, we're all happy to help out. Uh, 
For, and for anyone who doesn't know, for example, uh, Arrow465 is with us this evening. Tashir has a brand new album coming out tomorrow on the date of his birthday, so I hope that you will check him out. You can find links to a lot of his material at twitch.tv slash Tashir Games. So we've got a... Oh, I get it. Okay, start the generator, shine the light on the gate. I see what to do here. Uh, but yeah, otherwise we're going to be doing some Alan Wake. At least the goal here is to finish up episode three of the game. Ah, uh, yes. Good old leaky wires. The old generator conked out. I'd have to see if I could fix it and try again. Oh, b hold on. B to kick. <laughs> uh, my day went pretty well. Uh, I hope yours went well as... Went too well, too. We saw Shazam, which was interesting. Um, I can't say that I think that it was a very good movie, but I also feel like it was aimed at a younger audience, so it's not necessarily for me. Uh, it made... It, it was one of those movies that felt a lot like it was half written by somebody with very bad ideas, and then half written by somebody who came along and was able to, to fix some of it up. All right, so we're gonna need some sort of an anti-shadow technology. This will probably help. I will say that compared to a lot of the DC movies, Shazam was uh, broadly inoffensive. Like, it was fine. I don't want to burn any batteries on this, so we're just going to be patient. It took me a moment to recognize the flashbang grenades. They were an ideal weapon for my situation. How? How many flashbang grenades do they need per cop car here in Bright Falls, Maine? <laughs> Those come out of storage a whole bunch? Oh, right. Uh, wait. Do I know how to throw a grenade yet? Right bumper. Okay. Yeah! Yeah, I guess better flashbang grenades than, you know, M16s or whatever. Oh, cool. All right. Well, we're going to see if we can just get away from the axe-throwing deputy there. Hmm. Okay, he's better with his... All right, we got to get these folks together. Alan Wake, bringing cops together. So, I don't know the range on the flashbangs. Oh. You know, I'd like to... Yeah. Try to have them all holding hands before we fire one of those off. See, I don't want to burn my flashbangs when there's a light right there. Okay, Cl clearly I need to be a little bit more liberal with my flashbangs. I apologize, everyone. I'm a I'm a hoarder. Can't can't help it. I'm the guy that ends your Final Fantasy game with 
99 potions. Okay, also... Make sure we get at least those two. I think if there's a third guy, we can just flashlight him down. And here's another call. You're on KBFFM with Pat Main. It's Milt Peabody, Pat. What's on your mind, Milt? I live near the trailer park, Pat, and there's a big ruckus going on over there. Well, that's just up the road from me, too. Uh, what's going on, do you know? I don't know, but there's a bunch of police cars there. A helicopter buzzing around, and I think I heard some gunshots. Gunshots? Oh. Yes, sir, like from a pistol. So can you find out what's going on? I will say this. I think that the like the radio programs that you know we can find those little snippets of the the talk radio show. I think those are actually really well done. Also, I'm gonna run back to that light because screw this or this. Oh, the light went out. Okay. Well, that showed me. Yep, we were not going to be able to outrun him, so I feel okay about that. We can't climb that ladder, I'm sure. If anybody sees a uh, manuscript page, they glow, they're on the ground, and more than the thermoses, I really want to make sure that I get all those. Ah, a mine. That sounds... Oh, that's right. That's actually where we're going, isn't it? Like, we're supposed to make the... No, we're going to the radio station. Well, we found a cache. But if I remember correctly, Alan Wake's, like, kidnapper friend, his antagonist friend, who he hates and also is working with, is going to meet him at the mine. I guess it's just a cave, though. Trust no one in the dark. Good advice. The other thing that sort of occurred to me since episode two, I was... I was kind of sort of uh, thinking through my reaction and the fact that I I feel like this game is very good at setting up a tense atmosphere, but I'm not particularly scared by it. And Alan Wake's whole situation I, hasn't really resonated with me. And I was thinking about it, and I think that's because Alan Wake is an asshole and I don't like him. Uh, I don't like the way he talks to people. I don't like the way that he like reacts to his own situation. His relationship with his wife seems a little bit odd. Uh, and in talking about it with my producer, I think it's that... And, and by the way, so so one thing I haven't brought up is she's played this all the way through. She loves this. This was one of the games that um, when she heard that Mia was going to play it and that I wanted to abstain until I had a chance to like play it for myself, she's like, okay, then you have to play it right now. You have to play it right now. Uh, she's wanted to see it on stream for a long time. Um, so she is being very, very careful not to spoil anything on me but i feel like there's something about the way that alan wake relates to his wife where it feels like he really can crap i keep hold on i don't want to die here
hate to waste a grenade on one dude, but... Oh, so Tashir's asking which mic this is. So this is the Yeti Blue, and I believe that that came uh, as a recommendation directly from you, because, I mean, what do I know about mics? Oh, and we had a check. could lend me a car to get to the coal mine. See, that, that's what gets me. I just burned a grenade. I could have just run through that gate. <laughs> Should have looked. But yeah, uh, the recommendation was very, very much appreciated. So I want to hear this radio as well, but... Mr. Wake. Oh, I'm so glad you could find the time to do this, Mr. Wake. No way to run now, Jim Brown. You got away from me. Don't hurt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everyone calm down. Put the gun down. We're all friends here, right? Cool your jets, Nightingale. We got him. What the hell's the matter with you? There's a civilian in there. I had fallen off so many cliffs, it was ridiculous. That's what you get for naming a book, The Sudden Stop. It was probably good I hadn't had the chance to tell Maine where I was going. I'd have to lose the cops and find my own way to the mine. Nightingale stared through the broken studio window into the dark woods. He turned around, started to walk out, but Maine grabbed his arm. Young man, you almost shot me. You don't shoot off rounds at people like that. What's the matter with you? Nightingale shook his arm free, marched out. His cheeks burned with rage and humiliation. Boy, Nightingale better watch his staff or he's going to get suspended with pay. I still don't have a gun, though, do I? Crap. Okay, I really want that flare. Okay, and then I want to set off the flare right next to the generator so I can start it up. Or that. How do you... Oh, okay. So down on the D-pad switches and I think those are six flashbangs and one flare. So the flashbangs are still doing okay. Okay, that was mid-dodge. All right, they are not gonna fall for my light trick. Oh, so um, to just sort of share my thoughts, in the scenes between Alan Wake and his wife, I get the sense that Alan Wake really likes having his wife depend there was no on him. There sensible reason for the power company work lights to be here. It was almost as if they'd been left for someone like me to use. And, and I can't 
like quantify that. It's just something about the way that he talks to and about her. He's much more present and affectionate and interested in her when she is experiencing one of her like fears of the dark or something like that. Maybe I just haven't seen enough of them yet. Oh boy. I'm also, frankly, still trying to parse out if Alan Wife's, if Alan Wake's wife exists, because it is still sort of present in my mind that we haven't seen anyone who seems like a real person interacting with her, with, with uh, yeah, with her. But at the same time, we have, you know, as previously mentioned, Alan, Alan's book manager guy Barry does talk about her or at least appears to so it seems like Alan Wake is married I just you know we haven't seen anybody here in the town of Bright Falls actually speak to her we've seen her drive a car so that seems like that should count but then again I'm mindful that we might see like a flashback eventually where it just shows Alan getting into a car by himself and talking to himself. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sarah trusted her gut, and her gut said Agent Nightingale was an asshole. He felt wrong, and it wasn't just the smell of stale booze. It was in the way he flashed his badge, pulled rank, the look in his eyes when he wanted answers. Where was Alan Wake? What was this about an accident? Where was his wife? And most importantly, why did she let Wake go? He wouldn't answer her questions. Federal business was all he'd say. I like the idea that I am playing Alan Wake and Nightingale is playing Deadly Premonition. Although, uh, I don't think Agent Francis York Morgan was quite so trigger happy. Hello? The most stubborn man I've ever met. Alice? Alice? I'm so afraid. It keeps me in the dark. Please help me. I look at you, Alan, and it's not you. It's something else. Looking out from behind your eyes. Alice, I'm here. I'm so alone here. It's all gonna go to hell. You need to be careful. Cooperate. The connection had been terrible, but that wasn't the only thing that hadn't been right with the call. She sounded wrong somehow, but she had called me. The pipe wrenched itself loose from the bridge's steel framework. Wrapped in darkness, it floated in midair, twitching. For a moment, I didn't understand what I was looking at. The heavy object lurched at me with impossible force. I threw myself out of the way, but just barely. When I turned my flashlight on it, it shook in a dark rage before it flew at me again. Oh, hold on. Yellow arrows mean goodies.
Oh, nice. I really like being at max batteries. And max ammo. I think that I have not been paying attention to how much ammo is in a box, but I feel like we're probably going to leave here. So we'll grab one of the boxes, try to remember that there's one more here if we need it. Now, one thing is that I, I haven't been able to determine yet if the game creators think that Alan Wake is a sympathetic character. Like I kind of feel like he's been designed. I could see a railway bridge up ahead, and a warehouse of some sort on the opposite shore. I hoped I could find a car from there. I I feel like the uh, the writers of the game also sort of feel like he's a self-important shithead. Uh, and and another thing that sort of makes me think that is that I would say the same thing about Max Payne. I don't feel like the writers present him as a like, as a good guy. He's simply a bad guy to whom bad things happen, and now he's stuck in this endless nightmare of regret. The oh. darkness that was pursuing me was growing stronger, and it was taking over everything in its path. Whoops. Oh, this chapter of Alan Wake's book is really going to be confusing for people. The opposite shore. I hoped I could find a car from there. So, there's a few things I probably did wrong there. Maybe I should have shown my flashlight at the pipes and stuff. Maybe that would have, like, de-shadowed them. Or maybe I should have continued to run forward, uh, launch a flashbang grenade or a, or a flare. that was pursuing me was growing stronger and it was taking over everything in its path. Shining this flashlight so hard. <laughs> the opposite shore. I hoped I could find a car from there. <laughs> hey, Rickety Artist, how you doing? I would also like to differentiate my distaste for Alan Wake, the character, from Alan Wake, the game. I actually am really enjoying this. And I think w the most interesting thing to me is that they remastered all the in-game graphics to an extent that they actually outshined the little pre-rendered cinematics that they did back in the day. And at this point, like, well, I wonder why the developer didn't do the extra mile, whoever like did the PC port, and just make all the engine, all the cinematics in engine. Just recreate them. Maybe if I sort of, nope.
Get out of my way, weird bridge piece. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the opposite shore. I hoped I could find a car from there. I sighed with relief as I escaped the bridge of death, only to be beaten to death by a wheelbarrow that came flying at the back of my neck. I respawned a short distance away, demoralized but not ready to give up just yet. I, if they didn't, I, I feel like they remastered this. Am I? It looks super good. Is the thing like uh, you know? I'm playing this at 1440. Um, if this isn't remastered, then it says a lot about the original art style, that it was just sort of up res or whatever. But in, in fairness, yeah, it, this is not named like Alan Wake remastered or anything. I just, maybe I assumed that it was because it looks real sharp. Okay, so... I really need a way past this fence. The section of the game where we get, like, beaten to death by Darth Vader objects is done. I slammed the door shut right in his smug face. He pleaded for me to open the door. True to form, the asshole actually thought I would obey. I had no sympathy left. No guilt either. Not for him. I took a moment to savor the scream. I bet I had a smile on my face. It was all that I had time for. The dark presence was inside the lodge with me. As a teenager, just started to get interested in writing. Stephen King had been a source of inspiration to me. I thought about all the inanimate objects that had come to life in his books. No one is safe in a good horror story. Certainly not the protagonist. That's what makes them fun. This was anything but. The darkness could possess anything, and it was getting closer. I am holding down a lot of B. Okay. Is there any reason not to have the heavy-duty flashlight? Also, I do have that, yeah? Yes, okay. Uh, so Rickety Artist is noting that he hasn't played this game yet. Um, it is routinely on sale for like $3 on Steam sales. And gosh, I think we picked it up for PC years ago for probably like like five or, or maybe ten dollars. Uh, but it, it's it's been real cheap for a good long time. And so if you are curious about what you see, so far I would say that there haven't been any significant story spoilers. And it will surely be available during the Steam Christmas sale. The thing that really stands out to me is the, the combat effect, particularly when Alan like shoots one of the shadow guys and there's this like, their, their body sort of erupts with light. We'll see that here in just a second, I hope. Can 
continue reloading. There we go. Now, it occurred to me to try shooting the propane tank here, but I felt like I was real close to it. It's one of those elements in a game where you're like, okay, I know that explodes, I just don't know how close is lethal. Like, all, all the like graphical blurring effects, they, they still look great. I think someone's coming up on my right, or left, whatever. Uh, hello to Logbia7k. Yeah, for anybody joining at this moment, uh, the episode 3 that you see listed here on Twitch is actually episode 3 of the story. And uh, on that note, if anybody knows how from the menu, like from the main menu, it would be possible to start a chapter at the very beginning. I would love to be starting these episodes with the you know, previously on Alan Wake and get that whole episodic feel. Oh, hold on. Can we turn this on? We can. We take the facts of our existence for granted, unaware that they are merely a thin veneer of desperate self-delusion, covering a vast cosmos of madness and horror. All too often, the stars are right in Night Springs. Tonight's episode... Occasion. At some point in life, I'm going to, like, either hit YouTube or the extras menu and sit down and watch all of those episodes. I legitimately love... Wait, 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 wait. The darkness surged towards me, sucking everything loose from the ground into its depths, tugging at my clothes. I saw the flare the kidnapper had dropped and threw myself towards it just as I felt my feet leave the ground. The darkness embraced me with the force of a tornado. Somehow I managed to light the flare. The darkness roared and cast me away. I fell toward the dark waters of the lake far below. Okay, so let's make sure to keep one flare. Ow. Okay, well we're not going back that way. I was going to say, let's keep hold of one flare to throw at a tornado. Nope, that wasn't smart. I need to be somewhere that that can't get me. Uh, so Logby is saying that uh, once they start drinking, it's tough to stop. Uh, I have the opposite problem, uh, although I'm not sure that I'd characterize it as a problem. I never started drinking. It just never appealed to me, and there's a little bit of family history there. Uh, and people have assured me that I can acquire a taste for it. And my response is, why? Uh, it doesn't bother me at all. Okay. Watch for pipes. It doesn't bother me none if uh, other people enjoy a drink. But for me personally, it never got started.
boy, I have no ideas here. This is gonna take a second. I just don't feel like my flashlight is up to the task. Okay, fine. Oh wait, can I jump up here? Yes, jump! J Alan, use your arms! Fingers are for more than just writing, Alan. You can use them to get up on ledges that are the size of your height of your shoulders. So, before we trigger this whole thing, there's a gate ahead, there's that uh, green blinking light. I'm gonna try to reach that this time. I've seen it, I keep forgetting to try to hit it. Okay, gates open. Oh, I can use the vehicle. Uh, well, before I do that, let's take a look around here. Because I don't think that angry bulldozer can get in. Yup. Thermos. A lot of you is noting that it's not an easy game overall. I will say this, neither is it punishing. The, the checkpoints have been very generous whenever I've died. Uh, I don't feel starved for like ammunition or whatever. Boy, part of me wants to go back and get some of the like stuff that is there to collect. Not the collectibles, but I mean like ammo and such. Yeah. Bop, bop, bop. Okay. I had never been this glad to see the sunrise. I had a couple of hours to get to the coal mine. far now. Today, I would meet the kidnapper, and he would give me Alice. I wouldn't give him any other choice. A drowning man will clutch at a straw. Logby had also previously mentioned that that part of the game was evil if you don't know how to progress. Uh, fortunately, you know, things like the the first, like, three times I died against that bulldozer, I felt like a dope when I looked across and was like, oh, right, that bright green blinking light that clearly indicates that I should be touching it. Um, but, it, you know, it is difficult to be too observant when you were trying to roll out of the way of four guys. So, yeah, those first four deaths, I don't feel bad about them. It's just in retrospect, like, ooh, <laughs> yikes. Yeah, it was right there the whole time. Hey, he who dies, how you doing? Was I supposed to get, was that 
Did I screw up? Was I supposed to get in that car? Because this is going to be a long trek if Alan Wake was supposed to drive. Oh, God. Okay. If I get back there and, like, Alan threw his keys out because, I don't know, he had another weird fugue state. Interesting. So, He Who Dies is saying that uh, Six Underground was a fantastic film. I will now see it because I had heard uh, less positive things. But when I start to get a mixed reaction, like what He Who Dies is giving... That makes me want to uh, want to check it out. And hello to Fox Eyes. Yep. Okay. Glad I came back. Little by little, without realizing it, I'd come to believe that the story in the manuscript was coming true. The current of its narrative had taken me deeper and deeper into dark waters. Alice had been taken from me. Barry was probably in jail. I was a fugitive from the FBI. The whole world taken over by the Dark Presence was trying to destroy me. It all felt real, but it matched a textbook case of insanity. Wait, what the hell is that? Is that a... Hold on a second. It looks like, like an armchair just out on a rock precipice. It is, but more importantly, a coffee thermos. Isn't it? I gotta say, I would also sit here and drink my coffee. Uh, Ricky the Artist is making uh, another mention of the Netflix, I think it's a Netflix show, Shameless. How many episodes is per season on that? Because I think you were mentioning yesterday that uh, they're like on season nine, which is like supernatural numbers. And I'm just curious if the ep if the seasons are like, you know, eight episodes a piece or something. All right, hold on. We've got a staircase. Let me go up here real quick. Okay, Netflix has it, and it's 13 per season. I do think that you can afford to get your writing a little bit tighter if you have fewer episodes. But I do also like television shows that have a little bit of room to breathe with their characters. This is Pat Main, and you're listening to KBF-FM. Folks... <laughs> I want to apologize for kind of abandoning you to that looping music track last night, but I was detained. You see, I encountered a big shot G-man with an itchy trigger finger who could use a, a lesson in manners and a boot in the ass. Not necessarily in that order either. Now, folks, I know I'm not being very informative here, and I apologize for that. I really should just keep quiet, but I'm just so peeved right now. Because some people just shouldn't be carrying... Peeved. Peeved is the word that he uses when an FBI agent shows up and just starts firing wildly into his radio studio. Uh, I started to say earlier, I, I want to give a special call out to the little radio segments there because I think they are actually really well directed and the voice acting in them is very good. They sound very natural. I've listened to a lot of AM talk radio in my life and... That is at least a very good approximation of what the uh, the format and the callers sound like. Uh, I'm I have the apparently unpopular opinion that the the little radio uh, recordings that you could find in Batman Arkham Asylum, I thought those were the worst part of the game. I thought that they were very, very poorly done. I thought that they were a terrible way to provide exposition of the characters. Uh, and none of them sounded natural. All of them sounded like they were uh, reading directly from a script. And I've never heard anybody else complain about them. So I get the sense that I'm the only one that cares about it. Welcome back to KBF FM. 
Hope you enjoyed that tune. Now, Doc, you were talking about life and finding that special someone, that soulmate. Well, you were talking about that. I was saying I don't buy it. Well, see, to me, that's strange, because I always pegged you as a hopeless romantic. <laughs> you got me there, Matt. But I think love's where you look for it. So I like hearing sort of the general topic, but I'm not going to hang out to them. Yeah, I, I think that skipping those tapes in Arkham Asylum is, is a good call. W without getting too spoilery, um, th this is, it's a very, very minor part of the game because it's all backstory. The one for, for Harley Quinn was ridiculous because you find like five tapes for each person. And in the Harley Quinn series, as far as I could tell, she arrives as a sober, sensible, thoughtful psychologist. And basically after meeting Joker one time, like it's their initial interview, he like compliments her once and she's like, Ooh, Mr. J. It's like, wow, boy, you, who gave you a medical license? I was so disappointed in that because the, the, the idea of Harley Quinn, of a medical professional who was assigned to assist Joker and winds up getting so warped by him that she becomes this hopeless, pathetic, mewling um, sycophant was like so chilling. It was such a testament to Joker's um, like the magnetism and his madness and the way that it was handled in Arkham Asylum was uh, as as um, who literally just said it. I'm so sorry. He who dies. It was so cartoonish to me. For Mott, spying on the writer on the ferry had been a disappointment. His boss had made Wake Out to be something special, but Mott hadn't been impressed. He'd gotten a good long look up the wife, though, and he liked what he saw. Mott had fantasized about goading Wake into a fight, but it hadn't happened. Still, he'd get his chance to see if the writer had anything in him. He'd been promised as much. Yeah, to, to give a specific point of reference, there's a really good and very, very famous episode of Star Trek The Next Generation where uh, Captain Picard is captured and is methodically interrogated and tortured by, by, by another guy. The, the specifics are not um, very important. And not all of the episode, but a lot of the episode is dedicated to this locked room with these two characters uh, engaged in this contest of wills and the psychological toll that it winds up taking on them. And that is my baseline for what I would have expected to see from an interaction between Harley Quinn and Joker, except potentially unraveling over the course of this is not correct. I'm supposed to go down like that uh, slidey shaft, aren't I? Or am I supposed to go further down the road? I think I'm supposed to go further down the road. Sorry, hold on just one second. Yeah, uh, He Who Dies uh, is making the, the case that it felt very rushed because there was no clear timeline as you know established in the tapes. And maybe that was it. Uh, I am one I of early. the... I was supposed to meet the kidnapper at noon in the main building. The coal mine was quiet. It was a museum now. Oh, and just a bustling one, too. Hold on, I'll push my way past the crowds to go to the coal mine museum here in Bright Falls. Just a swift 90-minute drive from anything. Wait, wait, read. In 1970, a volcanic eruption below Cauldron Lake, while relatively minor, caused most of the deep mining tunnels to collapse or flood. 32 miners lost their lives in the calamity, and all mining around Bright Falls came to a final stop. Now many of the remaining buildings are protected as historical landmarks. Yeah, I, I just, I just want to sort of uh, wrap around to say, I think that Arkham Asylum is an astonishingly good game. It's just like that is one element that I felt was not as well. I didn't want to go well. outside. Cops had to be looking for me. The noon sun turned the place into a sauna. The day dragged on. 
Different scenarios ran through my mind. Ways of how I'd torture the kidnapper to get Alice back, or the different horrible things he could have done to her. I imagined her dead. I had no way of knowing she was still alive. It was killing me. I was running on blind hope. It was all a waste of time. The bastard never showed up. being jerked around you by you. You want to see your wife alive? Because if you do, you better watch what you say to me. Do we understand each other? I want to talk to Alice. Yeah, and I want the manuscript. Don't keep me waiting, Wake. Hello? Hello! Ah! I'm gonna kill him! I had to get to Mirror Peak. Okay, Mirror Peak probably... Maybe closer than ever before. Okay. I was gonna say, Mirror Peak is probably not down here, but I really want to jump down and see what's down here. Ah! Okay. Um, so, he who dies, what happens next Friday? It, uh, based on chat, I may have missed a message, but it looks like you, it looks like you're getting something, <laughs> but I missed the specifics of what it is. So we found museum coffee. I'm sure it's still hot. All right, and he says uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. My question for you, sir, will it still be on sale next Friday? Because I would hate for you to, to miss out on that. Uh, it is currently 20% off on Steam. Hold on, manuscript page. When Thomas Zane fell for Barbara Jagger, it happened fast. She was young, vibrant and beautiful, full of life. He had never been a very happy man, and without any seeming effort, she had changed all that. Zane felt good for the first time in his life. Everything she did was another piece of a jigsaw puzzle he hadn't even known he'd been missing. And best of all, she made the words flow, strong and sharp. She was his muse. Yeah, it, it may be worth looking at, you know, I, I understand finances and all. It may be worth taking a look because right now it's like 12 or $13 off or, or more, depending on the exact version that you get. No, oh, that wasn't quite as boomy as I wanted it to be. Okay, I gotta stop jumping down from there. Also, it is apparently showing zero uh, dollars discount for He Who Dies on Steam, so it may be because he is, I'm sorry, yeah, He Who Dies. Um, it may be uh, because he is in Canada. I would have thought that they would have had the same deals as the United States, but the video game market is sort of famous for moving over international customers.
Okay, I actually came back here for like a box of ammo that I think I didn't pick up and accidentally managed to avoid the haunted minecart. Yeah, 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 right here. Rickety Artist is asking where in the holiday sale is. If I were to guess, and this is very much a guess, uh, it'll probably be starting on the the week of the the week of Christmas. So I would think twenty second, twenty third. That said, there are a couple sites that correctly predicted every Steam sale this year. So if you were to do a Google search uh, and take a look at what other sale dates they predicted, um, there's a couple there that I think would be very reliable. The 19th, he who dies is saying. So, yep, that would be somewhat earlier. Word of the wise, don't buy anything on Steam until you see what's on sale, because most things you're looking at, unless they came out real soon, uh, like real close, probably going to be on sale. Then again, I can say that, uh, at least for us, we picked up everything we wanted during the Thanksgiving sale. I would love to find a way to disarm this Velociraptor car before we, before whatever's inside there finds a way out. I just don't know how we would do it. Yeah, I'm not going down there. Shine your light! Oh, hey, Fee Chris. I believe, unless I miss a chapter break, we are still here in episode three. Uh, some more people have shown up, so I do want to um, once again call out the fact that tomorrow is not only Tashirize's birthday, but also... What the hell? Okay, we need a flare. I read the manuscript. Hold on, I want to talk about Tashir's album. The only way to reach the hillside ahead was to go through the building. I had to find a way to avoid electrocution. Hmm. Well, while I'm trying to find a way to avoid electrocution, you can check out Tashir's channel at twitch.tv slash Tashir Games and get the latest information on the album that we'll be releasing tomorrow. Uh, and that is at T-A-S-H-E-R-R-E -R Games. Okay, I don't know where we're going to head to learn about electricity. Oh, okay, we're going to follow the lines back. I chose the grenades. Oh, and there's a music video as well. Uh, if you guys did a Google search, because I don't have the, the link available to me when I'm trying to shoot these jerks. But if you do a, a, a YouTube search... Oh, come on! I threw it right between the railing. I'm, I'm actually kind of impressed by that. Um, if you uh, hit up YouTube and you do a search for uh, Tashir uh, Rain, that's R-E-I-G-N, right? Yes. Oh, God, I hope I'm not spelling it wrong. 
Uh, but there's a music video that you guys can watch right now ahead of the release of the full album. Thank you to He Who Dies. That is why I'm very glad that we finally got our VIP situation at least partially sorted so that folks like Tashir and He Who Dies will be able to post links. Also, also, uh, as long as I'm killing a minecart with my flashlight. I would like to say that our... Hold on. I can't formulate a thought right now. Let's try to get these guys in another big group. Okay. On the positive side, Ellen Wake's health regenerates, so... Nope. Come on, go pop! Our Twitch channel typically has a, um, a section on it for, like... Hey, you know, check out some of our streamers that we support. Uh, that has been taken down because I, like a big doofus, tried to update it myself, and it came out all wrong. So we're going to go ahead and get that redesigned so that we can fit a lot more people onto it. It, it may still be very basic, but I wanted to start having direct links to... Uh, so many of the other people that we've met on Twitch over the last year. All right, well, I'm going to call that a victory. Speaking of electrified fences, there's that scene in Jurassic Park where Sam Neill, like, throws a stick against an electrified fence and concludes that it is not electrified. Does anybody know, would that work? I kind of feel like it's wood, it's in the air, it's not grounded, but I don't know. Oh, okay. I wasn't planning on breaking into any electrified compounds, but figured in case it ever came up. Yeah, gosh, I think the first thing I ever saw Tashir playing was probably Division 2, because it was just earlier in 2019. I would have liked to have seen the uh, the Mad Max stream because that's another game. Like that's that's another game that's sort of on this list of, hey, you know what I've always intended to play, and and then like jump in and do a deep dive on it. Okay, well, wait, wait. Before I go up the stairs, let's check out. I think there's at least one more room and a table full of supplies that I desperately need. Yes, uh, I definitely came through with I-95.
And I like to bring up the story because it's it's an example where it wasn't just what Tashir was playing at the time that I first visited, but scrolling down and looking at the other material on his channel, like the you know all the all the chat rules. Hey, don't you know d d don't do backseat gaming. No racism. No misogyny. No homophobia. Um, just hang out. Be cool. Have a good time. Games are fun. Uh, it is. It was so similar to the tone that we want to set here that it was, uh, it really stood out. I actually did try to shoot that propane tank in the back. I apparently missed. By the way, I hope people also check out He Who Dies. Uh, his streams are also a great deal of fun. I was watching the... I'm not going to lie. <laughs> One of my favorite things in the last stream was watching He Who Dies attempt to get into multiplayer in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. And it spent... This is not a joke. This is not an exaggeration. What was that He Who Dies? Was that 25 minutes of just loading shaders? Like, the man took a break and went outside for a smoke. It was, and it was still loading shaders when he got back. I don't know what was, <laughs> I don't know what was wrong with it. By the way, is this a Twin Peaks reference? I feel like a bright red sort of pleather armchair. That feels very Twin Peaks to me. Yeah, loading shaders and... <laughs> It's the kind of thing that you can't clip, but around minute 18, because uh, he who dies has has a has a face cam. Around minute 18, you can <laughs> you could just see the life, <laughs> all of the enthusiasm had drained out of the experience. It was, I'm sorry, it was very funny. And then he did get in and get to you know got to play a whole bunch, so that that was also good. But sometimes it is those unexpected moments of live streaming that can be the most entertaining. There was no way the flashbang grenades were standard power company equipment. Oh, I honestly thought I was going to be able to drive that. One of the game elements that, at least at this moment, kind of just confuses me are these puddles of goo on the ground. At the moment, the goo doesn't seem especially dangerous. We've only seen it in areas where there are not other enemies. And you just sort of, like, you don't even have to focus your flashlight. They're not even there to drain batteries. They could easily be walked around. I've just been sort of melting them on principle. Oh, boy! I successfully dodged that. A 
Hugh Dye says that he got a quad knifing. Is that simply four in a row or like four in like extremely rapid succession? Another person who uh, is very familiar with this game, by the way, is Feecrest. He, when we did a, a little test stream just to make sure that his computer was all set up, this was the game that he chose. And, like, uh, I think it was just in Chapter 1, so it was very early. Wait, hold on one second. I stared through the bars of the jail cell. Barry stood behind me, swaying on his feet, looking as ill as I felt. Agent Nightingale stood on the other side of the bars with Sheriff Breaker. Nightingale had a stack of manuscript pages in his hand. He seemed unhinged as he gloated. Well, I've got you now, Raymond Chandler. It's all here. All the evidence, including conspiracy to murder a federal agent. Okay, and uh, hey, thank you very much for stopping by, uh, Tashir. I hope you have a great evening, and we will be seeing you tomorrow for your stream uh, for sure. Uh, if I have an opportunity, we might do a quick episode in the morning, but it will be with the goal of uh, collecting anybody who is an early riser and then doing a raid over. Uh, I've been looking for this, uh, looking forward to this birthday stream and album release for several weeks now, so I, I'm very much looking forward to it. Hope you have a great night. Okay, so we see a um, coffee thermos up there. But yeah, uh, Fee Crest's very brief test stream of Alan Wake was the first I'd ever seen it, and I knew that it involved, you know, having... I knew it had involved a writer, I knew that it involved a flashlight, but I'm not sure that I, you know, understood how much gunplay there was to it, and just in that brief stream, we got to see sort of the the sparking... Uh-oh. Um, and sort of, like, bursting, and like, uh, the smeary kind of Japanese horror um, overlays that uh, make up the ghost. And I was like, wow, this game looks really good. Uh, I'm going to follow some of these, yep, to a secret cache. I feel like episode three here is where the developer was really feeling their oats. This game, th this uh, this chapter has been much more elaborate with a broader variety of enemies and situations that, than we've seen in the previous ones. Oh, I am full on batteries again. That is a great feeling. I had no real plan. I was going to give the kidnapper all the manuscript pages I had for Alice. If that wasn't enough, I'd hold him at gunpoint and make him talk. All right, let's check our corners, because I can't help but feel that we're gonna get jumped here with all these floodlights sort of hanging out. Uh, Fee Chris is noting this was a, a total sleeper for him. Aren't those the best games? The ones where you weren't coming into them with any particular expectation? And then they wind up like really surprising you? Uh, to circle bra back briefly, that's... Uh oh
that's kind of how I felt about Batman Arkham Asylum. Like, remember, there had not been any good Batman games prior to that. So when an, any, whenever a new Batman game was announced, it was just a rote reaction in the gaming community. Like, oh, okay, another, like, garbage failure to capture anything we care about the, the character. And oh, look, this one's written by Paul Dini. Well, everybody screws up once in a while, so I'm sure that's still going to be bad. Oh, and it's got Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. Well, nonetheless, they'll find some way to screw it up. And then it came out, it was like, the best. Okay, hopefully I only burned the one grenade. I pressed a lot of RB there. Wait, can I, like, bathe in light? All right, uh, my phone just died. Can you grab this and just go plug it in? Yeah, that's fine. It, uh, we're, it'll, it'll be off for tonight, and then just we'll check it tomorrow. Huh. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Vcrest is saying that he's never played Arkham Asylum. What? You have to now forget three things that you know about playing the base as punishment. That's... No, you have... Oh. Ugh, I can't keep playing now. You have to play that game. <laughs> I had no real plan. I was going to give the kidnapper all the manuscript pages I had for Alice. If that wasn't enough, I'd hold him at gunpoint and make him talk. Wait, okay, wait, we, we've just seen what's over that way. Let's try this other path. I don't like this other path. I'm not gonna lie, I really thought the floodlights would be more effective. No, there's uh there's some series like Assassin's Creed where there are some entries that are more essential than others. There are some series where it's like you you really don't benefit at all from playing certain entries like i would make that case about divinity original sin uh i thought that the first game was actually pretty lousy and then divinity original sin 2 we have a full-length playthrough up on our twitch channel uh it is an excellent game and i enjoyed it a lot so i would feel perfectly comfortable telling people to just skip that first game and then there's games where it's like or sorry, franchises where the whole thing really is worth your time. And every game in the series, um, 
add something more without eliminating or, or diminishing what made the previous games great. And the Arkham series is that. Yeah, I can hear him coming and I still don't quite get out of the way. All joking aside, I... And, and oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Because, so Feecrest and Fox Eyes have been talking about, like, doing their own streaming. You need to stream the Arkham series. You, I mean, like, it's a great series. It's a great choice for streaming. Uh, and to play it for the first time in 2020, like, hey, everyone, I'm going to play this for the first time. What's all the fuss about? I think would be so much fun. I don't know what is up on this side of everything. I'm gonna turn this on just so we have it. Yeah, for what it's worth, the, the Arkham games are uh, written primarily by Paul Denny, who was the creator and sort of uh, creative lead on the Batman uh, animated series, which was very, very well received. Also note, uh, we've gotten like six achievements in this episode so far. Uh, that last one was named Sound and Fury. Uh, anyway, uh, sort of written and, and sort of the story consultant was Paul Dini. So he is a man who definitely knows his Batman. Uh, Batman was played by Kevin Conroy, who voiced the character in the animated series. Uh, the Joker is played by uh, Mark Hamill, who, again, voiced him in the animated series. So it, it really is a reunion of that talent, and uh, it shows. It shows in the quality of it. Uh, also... Because I know that Feecrest was a fan of the Shadow of Mordor game, if I'm remembering correctly. Shadow of Mordor is lethal Batman. I mean, like, it is... It's not a subtle comparison. Uh, in fact, my understanding, and, and I don't have a source for this, but I've heard it said many times, that Warner Brothers developed a prototype of Shadow of War, and originally it was... Sorry, Shadow of Mordor... Originally, it was presented as we want to do a Batman game um, and here's our take on the Arkham Asylum combat. Uh, and that deal did not wind up going through in its entirety. So instead, it wound up going to... Uh, they, they made Shadow... Of, they, they just said, okay, then we'll give Batman a sword and have him behead his enemies and then made Shadow, Shadow of Mordor. So if you enjoyed anything about that combat, uh, Shadow of Mordor is... Uh, heavily, heavily based on Arkham Asylum, and, and it shows, and in the best possible way. Sorry, hold on just one second. The dark presence was moving ahead of me in okay. the same direction I was going. A cold feeling settled itself in the pit of my stomach. Was it going for Alice? I'll also note that there's actually four games in the Nobody Arkham Trilogy. May cause cancer. Uh, I don't like this. The speedy guys are usually like bosses.
Yeah, so the, uh, the Prime Trilogy is uh, Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and then Arkham Knight is the third game that finishes out that story. But in between two of them, in between City and Arkham Knight, a different studio uh, sort of put out kind of an interstitial game, uh, which was somewhat less polished, but still very, very good, and I think was unfairly maligned because it was like, quote-unquote, not a real Arkham game. People seem to incorrectly perceive it as being a cheap cash-in, uh, and it surely wasn't. Uh, but Arkham Origins is in there, and I've often thought to myself, would it is it sensible to play the because Arkham Origins is a prequel it is like Batman year one it is um where did these characters get their start and what was Batman's like one of his very early adventures not his first night out but like I believe the developers talked about it as being the place like was dead a ghost town had been for decades maybe a century you know th this is Batman ab about one year into his adventures what is happening Things were never as simple in real life as in fiction. I had lost count of the times I had wished there'd be a clear reason for my writer's block. Something to fight. Something to lash out on. There wasn't. I was filled with doubt. I was nothing like the hero in my books. Alex Casey had gone through his life with single-minded determination, never wavering from his goal. Even now, I was angry at myself. Angry at Alice. Angry at Barry. I was fumbling and I had no plan. I think I'd say, just to uh, sort of close that out, I would probably recommend playing the games in their release order, which is, again, Arkham, City, Origins, sorry, Asylum, City, Origins, and then Arkham Knight. Because even though Arkham Origins has... It, it's sort of lacking that razor-sharp level of polish that the other games have, it, the story, I think, is very well told, and I enjoyed it a whole bunch. As long as we're talking about, like, random Batman stuff, I think one of my favorite Batman movies is one of the animated ones, which is most likely available on Netflix. It's uh, Under the Red Hood, I think is the name of it. I, I, I texted my producer after watching it and said, this movie made me laugh and clap my hands. <laughs> I really, really liked it. I need something to protect me against the dumpster. Boy, do I not want to die here, but I'm not sure that I have... ...a lot of other options. Okay, that... I don't know, wagon or whatever down there. That looks like it might come to life, but it's way down there, and it doesn't seem to be coming to life right now, so... Let's see if I can just get out of here. Uh, 
Uh, while I'm running, I will note that tomorrow evening, more than a Mia should be streaming. And if I remember correctly, she said that she is going to be doing episode two of Graveyard Keeper. Although uh, I might be misremembering. She has indicated that she's going to be moving to more of a variety stream similar to what... Hold on. I kind of want to chill out for one second, just let our lives and flashlight come back, but... Okay, we doing okay? By the way, that was another achievement. I have no idea what the achievements are for. Melting furniture, apparently. I needed a key for the door. The end of that earlier sentence was going to be, uh, Mia's indicated uh, a desire to move to sort of a more structured variety stream similar to Patekin, Sunny Panda, He Who Dies. Uh, Folks who play a variety of different games, but will often sort of have uh, at least a loose schedule about like, oh, on Thursdays I play Call of Duty, on Fridays I do Monster Hunter, like whatever it's going to be. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how she engages with a variety of games. Uh, we here have always sort of focused on one game to the exclusion of others because that's how I play. But there's been times where we've mixed it up, at least for individual streams. Like, oh, here's some Division. Here's some Solaris. Like, whatever happens to... Anything outside of riding is a struggle. I feel ill. I managed to make my way downstairs. There's a shoebox filled with books and papers by Thomas Zane. It's very hard to focus, but I managed to read some of it. He's a poet. And a good one. He writes of muses and creators summoning fabulous things from a magic lake, using his powers to shape the world of a realm of gods and dreams and demons, dark things that wait for a chance to slip through, wearing the flesh of men as disguise. Zane writes about himself, his girlfriend being taken over by a dark presence, about growing scared of the lake. Zane believes it's a mirror to the gaping void of darkness above, where some Lovecraftian presence lurks. I crawl back upstairs, I'll borrow these things for my story. They ring true. They fit. I will be interested to learn after this whether or not... Okay. Sure. Hunting rifle. Well, wait, wait, wait. What do I have more ammo for? I've got like 11 hunting rifle and 29 shotgun shells. Just keep the shotgun for now. What I was going to say is that I'll be interested to learn at the end of this whether or not the actor who appears to have provided the likeness for Alan Wake, if he also did the voice. Oh, whoa. Oh, my God. I almost Bugs Bunny in my way right off the cliff because I was paying attention to something else. The kidnapper had sent me a text. The message was full of spelling errors and insults. It was telling me to hurry up. All right, impatienty. I'm not the one who changed the meeting location and time. So, 
it's just one it's just one shot per flare gun like i don't seem to have any additional ammo it's a one time fire like just smart bomb everybody in the area is what it seems to be Wait, I'm not sure I want to have it equipped all the time, though. Birds. So, this is real bad news, because... I don't feel like I can cross this... precarious, rickety bridge. Yep. With a flock of birds swarming. Nope, nope. <laughs> okay, like I said, generous checkpoints in this game, so I never feel too bad. No, wait, I've got birds. seven shells, apparently, or flares. careful this time. Okay. Getting physics four or five feet up in the air and then falling back down, uh, that doesn't seem quite like what was intended. Birds. Really careful now. Careful. Careful. There we go. Like I said, chapter three, it's real elaborate. Tunnels go to Cauldron Lake. Well, Okay, so there's this way, and then that other way. And it, it actually sounds like the whispering is coming from the other way. See, now I'm curious. Let's see what's under here. Nothing. Okay, so this looks like a point of no return, so I'm going to be boring for an additional minute uh, and go back and I just want to see what's down that other lake. Sorry, the other tunnel. This one. It's either short and uneventful or long and packed with reward. Without warning, the headache stabbed at my brain.
The hunters were big, thick-set men, confident and at home in the woods. They were feeling good, running on beer, ghost stories, and camaraderie late into the night. It did them no good, as they were taken by the dark presence, sucked deep into a darkness far worse than any ghost story they ever told or heard. Okay, Alan has not gone swimming at any previous point, and moreover, it looks like if we dive in there, we can't get back out. That looks a lot like death. Yeah, this is not Assassin's Creed. I don't think I can go in there. Well, while we backtrack, I will call at least brief attention to a couple charities that I would love it if people had a chance to take a look at. Uh, the first is Sunny Panda is doing a month of charity streaming here on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the Sunny Panda, where he is raising money for the Save the Children Foundation. And you can uh, donate through the links on his channel. Uh, it's never a bad time to donate to a children's charity, but it will be an especially good time here during the month of December as he is uh, currently going past his original goal and we are hoping to encourage people to double it uh, and to prove to him that Twitch viewers are as kind and generous during the holidays as any other community on the planet. You can also, on a very similar note, check out the charity that More Than Amia is collecting money for through the Extra Life charity page. You will find links to that on her channel at twitch.tv slash more than Amia. All one word. Ah, oh, nuts. Yep. yep. I should have done that against the big guy. Uh, to continue that last thought, uh, more than Amia is raising money for the Bay State Children's Hospital in Massachusetts here in the United States of America, and your money will go directly towards helping kids who uh, are seeking medical treatment and otherwise their families might not be able to, to afford that and you will be able to find that through the Extra Life charity page but a direct link is there on her channel he, right here on Twitch at twitch.tv slash more than Amia that's T-H-A-N-A-M-I-A During our Tuesday game nights, Fox Eyes often uh, describes getting... I'd have to make my way up this mine shaft in order to go on. Maybe the machinery could help me with that. Uh, sort of very watery eyes. And believe it or not, it's the dust in this area, like this sort of dusty, gritty, brown fog that is doing it for me. No, no, I'm I'm fine. I don't I don't actually need any um eye drops. This is purely psychosomatic. Go back up now. Like 
That might be it, except can I get up from here? It sure doesn't look like it. Hold on, let me uh, bring this down. Can I jump that? This looks real tenuous. This might This might be a checkpoint loader. Okay, wow, that actually worked. Now, yeah, nope. Okay, well, fortunately, we caught ourselves on the ledge. I guess I should have gone this way. Okay, and that's, yep, yeah, we gotta raise it up. That should be okay. That is not okay. Okay, so I gotta lower it by about three feet. I misunderstood where my launch point was. Right about there. Well, the atmosphere in this is whoops, <clears throat> crud. Oh man. No, okay, I didn't I didn't go too far back. I thought I might have been like a couple ways back, but no, we're good. Okay, and I wanna go from this area. I was concerned uh, when I said I sort of wanted to focus on finishing chapter three of Alan Wake during episode three of our stream because I thought, you know what, we already played the first section of it. Maybe this will just wind up being like a like a 40 minute stream and that would feel very, very short. No, it turns out that chapter three is elaborate. All right, I think our ultimate goal is up. But let me just take a quick look down here. Oh, this this might actually be the way. Yeah, let me let me look up real quick. Lightning flashed behind the windows of Cauldron Lake Lodge. Tor Anderson laughed and held the steel hammer above his head. Nurse Sinclair was trying to calm him down without success. Tor grinned madly and shouted, My hammer's up. Here's a friendly poke from Mulnir, wench. He brought the hammer down with all his might on Sinclair's head. We're on a comeback tour, baby. Wait, oh man, there was a focus and I didn't look at it. Hold on, I just want to see what it's intent on showing. 
I thought we were at least at one point working our way towards the radio transmitter, but I guess that was now far enough back that that was when we got to the actual radio uh, broadcast station. Boy, look at that. As long as we have a quiet moment, I'd also like to just sort of uh, further elaborate on something that I said in episode one that a couple people had asked about. It was going too far to say that in episode one of Outer Wilds, not Outer Worlds, but Outer Wilds, that it made me violently ill. It did. I was earnestly feeling a little bit unsettled at the end of that. Dodge. Violently ill, not so much, but just sort of like, ugh, I don't, I don't really feel too good. It was definitely reaching that point. And I think that was just the... There was an odd hitchiness to how it moved. You know, it, it, it wasn't a... It wasn't a solid 60, it wasn't a solid 30, it was this sort of um, just weird herky-jerk motion when walking and looking around, and it started to have its effect immediately and just wasn't, it, it sort of kept growing to the point where by the end it was like, oh, I, I legitimately feel pretty bad, so that's why we decided to move on to Alan Wake. I have a feeling the game has communicated it is time to use the flare gun, but I just want to aim carefully and make sure that we make the most of our shot. crash you can walk away from. That was well done. Uh, random movie fact. If you're ever, like, you know, browsing the guide on your DVR and you see the movie Frozen, it might be worth taking a quick look to see which Frozen it is. Uh, there is a uh, sort of uh, suspense... I, I, I'm not sure. It's not quite a horror movie, but... Uh, it is a horror-like movie about a group of people. Get in the sense that I should have shot the last one of these that I saw, too. Starting to think there's an achievement for knock down all the stacks of bottles, but stacks of cans, rather. Anyway, The Frozen that I'm thinking of is a movie about, I believe it's three... Uh, young college-age kids who get stuck on a ski lift indefinitely. Like, not, not for like an hour, but for an extended period of time. And there are various attempts to deal with this situation. And I actually like the movie quite a bit. 
I want to say that it was released before the Disney Frozen. But you would not want to show the wrong one to your kids. Apparently Mia has uh, sent word that she wishes she could be in here right now. Yes, Mia is also intending to play this, and I was uh, torn by the fact that I, I really, really wanted to be able to watch her playthrough of this, but that I also wanted to play it myself. I had actually thought she was going to start right after Layers of Fear. Uh, instead, she'll be going on the Soma. Uh, my personal goal had been to just stay slightly ahead of where she was in Alan Wake so that I could uh, watch her stream while still having the experience of playing it for myself. But she will be uh, do, uh, presumably do, doing Soma next, and I think that she said that that's going to... Horror games are going to continue to be her... Wednesday evening affairs, but yes, I very much would have liked her to be in here as well, but I, I get it. You know, I'm still trying to decide what I want to do about her Soma stream, because that's another crap. I sort of ruined that. Uh, Soma is another game that I had always sort of intended to, to play, but I don't, I really don't want to miss Mia's playthrough. Uh, if you are watching this and somehow have not had the opportunity to see more than a Mia, she actually has a YouTube channel where you can catch a uh, sort of a greatest hits compilation. Wait, hold on. Cauldron Lake. The eighth deepest lake in the world, Cauldron Lake, is a caldera lake formed in a volcanic crater. The volcano itself could be considered to be active, but has not erupted since the volcanic earthquakes of 1970, and even then the underground activity was comparatively mild. Despite some property damage, there were no casualties. Cauldron Lake is one of the most beautiful spots in the Bright Falls area, as well as a central figure in many local uh, folktales. It, it's a popular recreational area for the area residents. Uh, but yeah, M Mia has a sort of a, a highlights reel uh, for both her playtime in... God damn it, Alan Wake. Can't you do anything like a normal person? Uh, sort of a highlights reel for... Outlast and Outlast 2 that are very, very much fun. It gives you a great sense of what to expect from her channel. I hate this. All right, you thought that was funny? You're gonna love this. Okay. Well, we had that one, I think it was in chapter two, where Alan just completely ran out of ammo. Like everything, ammo, flares, everything. We basically just had to scramble to the next light pool. And I've been even more judicious, describing myself as a hoarder, but even more judicious than that uh, to make sure that we don't run out. But 
been doing pretty well so far. Flare gun. Nice. Nice. Maud had checked all of Stucky's rental cabins. There had been no sign of the wakes. It was dark when he'd found their car parked at the end of the road by Cauldron Lake. It made no sense. They must have taken a wrong turn. But there was no sign of them, and the car had been there for hours already. Frustrated, Mott stood on the rotten ruin of the footbridge that had once led to Diver's Isle before it sank beneath the waves years ago. The boss wouldn't be happy. Is Barry's last name Mott? No, I don't remember. And I'm not sure if there's like a character list somewhere that we can check against. Incidentally, by the way, uh, you know how Steam has uh, trading cards? The first... Th the first three trading cards I got during our play sessions for Alan Wake were um, Barry, Barry Foil, and Barry. <laughs> so if anybody needs a Barry trading card, I, I've got a variety of them. No, go up. And uh, for the record, we are either going to hit a, a chapter break here or we're going to have to call it pretty soon because it is going on 1130. Uh, that looks like it could be an entrance. Eleven thirty at night, and if we're to have any streaming time tomorrow, we'll be relatively early again with the intent of jumping over to Tashir Games. Man, oh boy. You have to remember to get, go get that coffee thermos come out the other side of this building. Okay, I don't know who... Could Tom be mot backwards and missing one of the T's? Wait, hold on. I miss you, Tom. Did you write this? Tom. Oh, Thomas Zane. Okay. CW and TZ. So TZ is Thomas Zane. CW, we've undoubtedly read who that is in the various chapter pieces, but I'm blanking on the name right now. Charlotte somebody. Ever do a Google search for like booby trap house? There was a a residence in France, I believe it was, where uh, the resident was shot uh, and when the police came to respond, they found that he had been shot by basically an automated trap that he had set up and it had gone off and he had been shot to death in there. But what's more alarming is that they found multiple lethal booby traps all around the house. Uh, it is a miracle that none of the first responders or police officers were injured or even killed in sort of just searching the premises because they were... Okay.
All right, anybody that's left gets the pistol. And uh, the next thing I say, I'm going to get the numbers wrong. So, you know, if you if you do look it up, you know, forgive me if my exact digits are incorrect. But I want to say that they found uh, in this man's journals detailed plans for um, like 13 or 14 traps. It might have been eight or nine, but detailed plans for a specific number of traps and of that group, like like nine traps, they successfully found and disarmed eight of them, including the one that had killed him. But they never found the last one. And as a result, it had it was unclear whether or not uh, he had simply never gotten around to actually deploying it, or if someday, possibly decades later, someone would come in and like move a plate and a shotgun would go <laughs> go off and i always wondered what the resale value on that property was because <laughs> i don't care at all about living in a murder house or whatever like oh this is the room where all the children died okay well i'm gonna make it my study um but like the booby trap house aha here's that coffee thermos yeah no i wouldn't move in there my god you gotta knock down like a non-load bearing wall and there's like a package of TNT in there that just levels the block. Oh, and by the way, the reason he was doing it is that he was apparently estranged from his family and he- I could see Cauldron Lake. I thought I could make out the spot where the island and the cabin had been. There was a light near it. It had to be a boat. All right, we're gonna make our way to that boat see if we can uh wrap up episode three here uh, I was close Whoops. now I had to get there fast I dreaded what I would find wait oh there was a page oh thank God I saw that I tried to hold on to Alice but her form melted away I was losing control dr Hartman stood in her place I wanted to hit him but my arms were jelly he smiled it was a reassuring smile, and I hated him for it. I had to give you a sedative. Don't fight it. You went through another rough period. Right now, it's very important that you stay calm. We don't want you to have another episode. You're a patient at my clinic. Have been for a while now. Wait! Are you? Wait! Hey, I'm here! I'm coming!
So far, we have managed to get through these musical interludes without a copyright strike, but I don't want to push it, so we will once again have to skip this. My apologies to the musical artists and the creators of the game, because I would much rather be able to listen to this, but... Previously on Alan Wake, I'm hunted by the law. Sheriff, Wake's running. I'm giving chase. Are you seriously telling me that writer just took out my deputies? A thriller I supposedly wrote is coming true. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I was told that Alice had been kidnapped, but that was a lie. We don't have his wife. We don't know where she is. Her purported kidnapper was eaten up by the Dark Presence before it attacked me. Alan, shh, baby. It was just a nightmare. Alice. I fell. I had to give you a sedative. Don't fight it. I... You went through another rough period. What? Right now, it's very important that you stay calm. We don't want you to have another episode. You're a patient at my clinic. Have been for a while now. The shock of your wife's death triggered a mental illness. No, you're... you lie. You're suffering from various symptoms of undifferentiated schizophrenia. Bastard. It's okay, Alan. I felt groggy. Whatever Hartman had bumped in me was making me numb. I felt like this was happening to someone else. Someone I was watching on television. I couldn't think. Couldn't focus. Okay, and we are going to call it there. If I can figure out some way to actually begin episode four with that content, then maybe we'll do that. Um, I'm not sure if that's successful to the episodes, you know, listing on the main menu or whatever. But we're going to call it there for episode three and chapter three of Alan Wake. We will be back possibly tomorrow morning before twitch.tv slash to share games starts up. Uh, but if you are watching this, if you have an opportunity to stop by his stream at any point tomorrow and wish him a happy birthday, give a thumbs up on that um, album video that he put out on his YouTube channel. Uh, the to share um, rain video was linked earlier in our Twitch here. Uh, you know what? Let's do one more up before we wrap up for today. Hopefully that won't interfere with the stream. Just one second. Just want to make sure that we have a good link for that. So time out. And while we take a look here, I hope that you guys will twi check out twitch.tv slash Petiken, P-E-T-I-E-K-E-N, the Sunny Panda, who, as previously mentioned, is doing a month-long charity stream to benefit the Save the Children Foundation. Hold on. I want to make sure this doesn't actually start playing on stream because, yeah, this is his material. Uh, Twitch.tv slash more than a Mia should also be streaming tomorrow. Why am I not finding? Ah, here we go. Yep, got it. Let's just get the full link here. Right. Where the hell is it? Sorry, there are lots of windows open right now. There we go. Okay, so if you check out in Twitch, we've got a link going directly to the Tashir Rizé rain video, and I wanted to make sure that we got that up on our way out. Uh, much thanks to Feecrest, Fox Eyes, Arrow 465, Tashir Rizé, He Who Dies, Rickety Artist, and possibly others that I'm forgetting. I always feel bad uh, when we miss somebody who was in here and uh, participating in the stream. So I'm just going to scroll up real quick, make sure we didn't miss... Oh, oh yes, uh, Logbia 7K. Uh, I'm not sure if Logbia wound up deciding to follow, but if so, thank you very much. And if not, that is cool as well. We're always happy when people stop by and check out the channel. We're going to call it there and probably toss over to twitch.tv slash McMaster, who is playing some Rust. And otherwise, we will see you guys a little bit later in the week. Until then, thank you so much, and I hope you have a great night.